Hello everyone. A uh, very good evening and a warm welcome to the inaugural session of the online workshop on cyber security and digital forensics. Uh, we are glad to have you here with us this evening. Uh, I'm Armand Basul Pariti, Associate Professor of Parliament of Computer Science and co-coordinator of this event. Dear participants, it is the tradition of our university that on all formal occasions like this, we always begin with the recitation of the divine message. And to do this pious duty, I like to call upon Dr. Faisal Anwar, Assistant Professor in the Department of Computer Science, to decide the verses from the Holy Quran. Over to you, Dr. Faisal Anwar. Uh, Thank you, Arman, sir. Okay, one minute. Before uh, Dr. Faisal starts, uh, uh, Jishan, you may please unmute mute yourself. Jishan, please mute yourself because there is an echo. Yes, okay, fine. Now, Dr. Faisal, may you uh, please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, I am reciting here um, uh, verse number 284 from the uh, chapter number 2 of Holy Quran. Audo billahi minash shaitani rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa in kuntum ala safarin wa lam tajidu katiban farihanum maqbooda. Fa in amina ba'dukum ba'dun fal yu'addil ladhi tumina amanatahu wal yattaqillah rabbah. Wa la taktumu shahada. وَمَنْ يَقْتُمْهَا فَإِنَّهُ عَطِمٌ قَلْبُهُ وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ عَلِيمٌ And the meaning of this verse is and if you are on a journey and cannot find a scribe then a security can be taken and if one of you interests another then let him who is interested discharge his trust faithfully and let him fear Allah, his Lord. And do not conceal testimony, for whoever conceals it, his heart is indeed sinful. And Allah is knowing of what you do. Thank you so much. It is over to you, Arman, sir. Thank you, uh, Dr. Faisal Anwar, for the recitation and beautiful translation for the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, in this information age, we live in a connected world where everything is connected to every other thing. And this kind of interconnection brings a lot of ease and benefits to individuals and the organizations, but at the same time poses a lot of security related issues. So in modern times, cybersecurity has become the most concerned matter as cyber threats and attacks are overgrowing. Attackers are now using more sophisticated techniques to target the systems or assets of security value. And the situation is such that be it individuals, be it a small scale business or large organizations, they're all being impacted. And in these circumstances, all the organizations, whether IT organizations or non-IT organizations and individuals must understand the issue and importance of cybersecurity and focus on adopting all possible measures to deal with uh, cyber threats. Further, in order to fight cyber crimes, it is necessary to understand the use of scientifically derived and proven methods to collect relevant digital evidence from digital sources, which is also known as digital forensics. It is important to understand what challenges these digital forensics investigation methods face at the time of practical implementation. The law informants 
uh, enforcement agencies who incorporate the collection and analysis of digital evidence into their infrastructure are challenged by the need to train officers to collect digital evidence and keep up with the rapidly growing technologies. The objective of this workshop is to address these issues and challenges involved and to introduce the participants with the latest in the field of cybersecurity and digital forensics. Ladies and gentlemen, I now take this opportunity to welcome the dignitaries. We have with us as guests our eminent resource persons, Dr. Manju Khari. Uh, she's associate professor in JNU, New Delhi. Mr. S.H. Abbas Mehndi is joint director, STPI Bhopal. Mr. Vipin Gupta is director, Unit Labs Private Limited, Moga Punjab. Dr. Karan Singh is assistant professor in JNU, New Delhi. And Ms. Uh, Vijaya Tiwari, Executive Director, Tathya Wing Federation, Noida. I extend a warm welcome to them. Also joining us, all the teachers of the Department of Computer Science, AMU, and the Director of uh, Professor Ramen Faroqi Computer Center, AMU, Dr. Parvez Mahmood Khan. I welcome them all. Also, we have with us the chairperson of the Department of Computer Science, AMU, and the convener of this event, Professor Asim Zafar, whose invaluable guidance is cherished by all of us. I welcome you, sir. It's that we have amongst us a very shining personality, a brilliant yeah. researcher, having oh more than. A brilliant researcher having more than 32 years of research experience, more than 200 research publications to his credit, all in top rated international journals, editor and referee of many reputed international journals of mathematics, a renowned mathematician who has traveled widely and delivered invited lectures in reputed international conferences and seminars, a passionate teacher whose career as a teacher spans more than 35 years, out of which more than 16 years as a professor of mathematics. He has received many scholarships and awards and also handled many research projects successfully, guided many MPhil and PhDs, and currently, is also serving as chairperson of the Department of Mathematics. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dean of the Faculty of Science and the co-patron of this workshop, Professor Muhammad Ashraf. I extend a hearty welcome to you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, now I take the session a step forward and call upon Professor Asim Zafar, chairperson and convener of this event to be the first speaker this evening and please add us the audience over to you sir thank you thank you dr Rahman Asul Farid sir uh, uh, may i confirm from uh, the dean sir whether uh, am i audible yes dean sir can you hear me please confirm yes we are audible you know, there is some audio issue at the Dean's event. Sorry for the inconvenience to all the participants. Professor Asim Zafar, Chairperson of the Department of Computer Science. Professor Manna Siddiqui, Coordinator. Dr. Arman Rasul Faridi, Coordinator of this workshop. Dr. Parvez Mahmood Khan, Director, Computer Center, Distinguished Resource Persons, Faculty Members of the Department of Computer Science, and all the participants of this workshop, 
ladies and gentlemen dear colleagues and participants the introduction of the internet has created unparalleled opportunities for commerce research education entertainment and public discourse a global marketplace has emerged in which fresh ideas and increased appreciation for multiculturalism have flourished the introduction of search engines international information greatly enhanced quality of life in individuals now in with individuals operations public organizations and institutions can more effectively communicate with each other using global public network access to unprecedented information has cut across traditional boundaries of communications the internet has successfully created a universal platform for information exchange and the speed and the speed and efficiency has enabled agencies to communicate with other agencies on a global scale solidifying relationship and increasing cooperations however the internet and the increasing reliance on digital technology and communications have also had negative repercussions more importantly new technologies have a history of breeding new forms of socially undesirable behavior while enhancing traditional ones the ever increasing reliance on technology by individuals and companies in resulting in increased exchange of sensitive information on the network leading to increased threat to privacy and security cyber security mechanism help to protect data information and devices from such threats even after taking all the precautions possibly possibility of data hack is always there once the data for our information is compromised the investigation process starts to pinpoint what has gone wrong digital frontiers uh, digital forensics is the uh, process of investigating such data breaches the increasing availability of wireless technologies social networking and smartphones has complicated the investigative landscape even further the authorities across the globe are struggling to create and enforce laws and regulations inclusive of emergent technology and cyber security and digital forensics technologies became all the more important and gained the <clears throat> center stage in this era of highly connected world it is indeed a matter of great satisfaction for the uh, the, the department of computer science has chosen such a contemporary topics for this workshop i congratulate professor asim zafar chairperson of the department and his team for their untiring efforts in organizing series of workshops and webinars on recent topics of on regular basis i am happy to note that large number of participants from academia and industry are participating in this workshop and the fact that the participants are not just from india but from all across the world makes it more comfortable commendable i am confident that participants will be benefited from the rich experience and expertise and uh, of the esteemed resource persons i wish this workshop a great success thank you all and thank you very much for your patience thank you very much sir for your for enlightening us with your uh, words of wisdom and for sparing your precious time for us this evening i thank you from the bottom of my heart on behalf of the department of computer science ladies and gentlemen the technical due to technical issues there was some lag in between so maybe we missed uh, the uh, address of 
Prof. Uh, Asim Jafar, the chairperson and convener of the event. May I now request very humbly to Prof. Asim Jafar to please address the audience. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rahman Asul Faridi, and uh, thank you. Uh, uh, dear participants, due to some technical glitches, uh, we have to change the order, and uh, uh, our Dean Sahab is having certain uh, important work. Uh, still, I am very much thankful that he has spared his valuable time uh, to address the uh, gatherings. Uh, respected uh, Dean, Faculty of Science, uh, Professor Muhammad Asraf Sahab, and co patron of this workshop, eminent resource persons, Director, Computer Center, all the esteemed faculty members of the Department of Computer Science, Professor Tamanna Siddiqui, coordinator of this event, Dr. Arman Nasul Faridi, co coordinator, distinguished guests and participants. Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning, a very good evening to all of you. Uh, it's my great pleasure to welcome all the participants to the online inaugural ceremony of five days online workshop on cyber security and digital forensic. On behalf of the Department of Computer Science, Aligarh Muslim University, I extend a warm welcome to all of you. With ever increasing use of internet in almost every walk of life, be it industry, business, academia, research, or personal communications, most of the things are digital and hackers have great access and opportunity to capture information than even before. Securing the information has become one of the biggest challenges in the present day, and hence significance of cybersecurity has acquired vital place in IT administration. High value hacks and data breaches are becoming increasingly common, and it's important for business to ensure that they have the right technologies and procedure in place to combat the threat of potential breaches. According to a new study conducted by Jupiter Research, the cost of data breaches is predicted, is predicted to increase from $3, billion, $3 trillion each year to over $5 trillion in 2024, with an average annual growth of 11%. That is a big number. Cybersecurity refers to protecting systems connected to the internet from threats in cyberspace. It involves protecting software, data, and hardware, and helps to prevent cyber criminals from gaining access to the information devices or the network. Cyber forensics, on the other hand, is the scientific process of identification, seizure, acquisition, authentication, analysis, documentation, and preservation of digital evidences. With an aim to update the skill set of the students, fresh industry recruits, alumni, researchers, and the faculty members, and make them aware with the importance of this most trending skill, and to introduce with the current status of the cybersecurity and digital forensics related knowledge, the Department of Computer Science, AMU, is organizing a five day online workshop on cyber security and digital forensics during 26 to 30 August 2021. Sir, I would like to inform you that we are not charging any fee for this workshop. The registration is completely free. The only thing desired from the participants is their sincere and active participation. Uh, it's my pleasure to have with us the Dean, Professor Muhammad Asraf Sahab, he is a renowned mathematician and he has been uh, appearing in the list of uh, great mathematicians of the world and he is among 100 top mathematicians. So it's my pleasure to welcome him. And he is uh, fortunately the Dean of the Faculty of Science and the co-patron of this workshop. His support guidance and encouragement have always been a source of inspiration for us. I feel honored to express my sincere appreciation to Dean Saab and I extend a warm welcome to you, sir. Uh, I am very much thankful to him that despite his very busy schedule, he had, he had to conduct some very important examination on this day, but uh, on our request, he has rescheduled it and spared his variable time to grace this occasion. I am very much 
uh, thankful from the bottom of my heart, sir. Sir, I would like to inform you that this is the third workshop of the series. The department has started with an aim to keep the students and faculty members well abreast of the upcoming knowledge, tools and technologies related to computer science and information technology. Besides workshops, the department is also conducting webinars on several contemporary topics. The department has a very rich pool of alumni who have been working in prestigious positions in the leading IT companies all across the world. They have a rich and varied experience of the corporate world. We involve such experienced alumni in most of these activities wherever possible and provide them a platform to interact with the present lot of technocrats. This serves twofold objectives. At one hand, our students are benefited from the rich experiences of these alumni who may guide the students for better career planning and update them with the modern technology and corporate trends, enthuse the young minds to take up initiatives for startups and step into entrepreneurship and like that. And at the other hand, it serves the purpose of connecting alumni to their alma mater. Sir, I find it pertinent to mention that we have received encouraging response from our alumni and they have volunteered their services for this noble cause. Sir, more than 1000 participants have registered for this workshop, out of which there are 58 industry professionals, 242 teachers and around 685 students. I would like to add that participants not only from various parts of India, but from all across the world have shown interest in this workshop. We have participants from 23 different states of India besides participants from various departments of Aligarh Muslim University. International participants from Bangladesh, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Pakistan have registered in this workshop. 221 participants are from AMU, while 764 are from other institutions. It is quite heartening that participants from 162 different institutions of India and wall are participating in this workshop. I, on the behalf of the Department of Computer Science, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh, extend all the participants a heartiest welcome. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome eminent speakers, Dr. Manju Hari from JNU, Mr. S. H. Abbas Mehdi, Director, STPI Gopal, Mr. Bipin Gupta, Director, Unit Labs Private Limited, Moga Punjab, Dr. Karan Singh from JNU, Ms. Vijaya Tiwari, Executive Director of Tathya Wing Federation, Noida, who have vast experience of managing the security aspects of the network devices and information. I find them well suited to conduct this workshop on this topic. This online workshop could not have been made possible without active involvement of Professor Tamanna Siddiqui, who is coordinator of this online workshop. She has emphasized the idea of this workshop. Uh, I would like to inform you that uh, she is suffering from severe flu and she is having a bad throat uh, today. So she will not be able to uh, interact with the audience uh, today. Hope she will be okay in a day or two and she can interact with you uh, very soon. Uh, I admire her efforts in this regard and I extend a hearty welcome to Professor Tamanna Siddiqui as well. Dr. Rahman Rasul Faridi, co-coordinator of this workshop, deserves special praise for his remarkable efforts in publicizing the event and taking care of the registration process. In the end, I appreciate the cooperation of all the faculty members, staffs, technical team, and all other persons who provided necessary support in organizing this event. I hope that everyone would actively participate in the workshop and enjoy a fruitful session for all the five days of this workshop. I warmly welcome you again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Over to Arman sir. Thank you very much, sir, for your uh, words. Ladies and gentlemen, with the address of the last speaker, this inaugural session comes to an end. I thank each one of you for your presence and for your patience very soon. The first technical session will begin. So, 
I would request you to be ready and remain online on the same link. Good luck and thank you once again. Uh, we will come back with the technical session at 4.15. So we are just taking a five minute break. All of you are please requested to be signed in in the meeting room and uh, we will start the technical session, the first technical session of today's at 4.15 p.m. just after five minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Challenges, yeah, yes. issues in cyber security and you are audible also, so that's fine. So we will just start after five minutes at 4.15. Okay. Okay, thank okay. you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the first technical session will be coordinated by uh, Dr. Mohammed Nadeem, he is Assistant Professor of, in the Department of Computer Science. So uh, now it's over to Dr. Nadeem. Thank you, sir. The forensics. The speaker of the session is Dr. Manju Khari, Associate Professor, System School of Computer and System Sciences, JNU Delhi. She will be delivering her lecture on the topic challenges and issues in cybersecurity. So let me introduce our resource person. Before joining JNU, Dr. Manju worked with Major Netaji Subhash University of Technology East Campus under government of NCT Delhi. Her PhD is in computer science and engineering from NIT Patna, and she received her master's degree in information security affiliated with Guru Gobind Singh in the first University, Delhi, India. She has more than 80 published papers in referred national and international journals and conferences, including IEEE, ACM, Springer, Indoscience, and elsewhere. Ten book chapters in, in, in Springer, CRC Press, IGI Global, and others. She is also co-author of two books published by NCRT of 11th and 12th standard and co-editor of 10 edited books. She has also organized five international conference sessions, three faculty development programs, one workshop, one industrial meet in her experience. She has delivered expert talks, guest lectures in international conferences, and she is also a member of reviewer and technical committee in various international conferences. Besides this, she is also associated with many international research organizations as associate editor and guest editor, including Springer, Wheelie, and elsewhere. And she also reviews for various international journals as well. I welcome our eminent speaker once again. Before inviting our resource person for a talk, I want to mention some information and rules to the, our participants regarding how the technical sessions will be conducted, not only this one, but other technical sessions as well. The first session will be of one hour on basics of cybersecurity till 5.15 p.m. And then we'll have a break of 10 minutes. The second session will start from 5.25 p.m. in which our speaker will focus specifically on the challenges in cybersecurity. And it will continue till 6.20 p.m. After both the sessions, we will have a question answer session. There are two ways in which you can ask the questions. One, you can type the question in the chat box anytime during or after the session, and I will ask the same from our speaker in the end. The second way is that you can raise your hand. There is an option there, and the same and uh, uh, during the question answer session, and I will unmute you, and then you can ask directly from the speaker. Otherwise, you will remain mute for the whole duration. So with that, I welcome the speaker once again. And uh, Dr. Manju, you can start your lecture, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for inviting me with, the, with such a nice introduction. And uh, thanks to AMU and computer science department of AMU to conduct a workshop and call me for the session. So as far as my experience is concerned, I did my master's in information security and I did a rigorous study in information security but as far as the requirement of workshop we start with the basic part then we'll move on to the major challenges and issues which are actually there in the real time scenario so let us begin with the session so my major i mean the topic is uh, challenges and issues in cyber security well uh, the moment i don't know why i'm not able to move the slide 
can sir you help me out why i'm not able to move my slide yeah i think now it is it is visible yeah, yeah it is coming fine it is coming fine thank you so the outline of the complete session is we will discuss about the introduction we will discuss about the cyber security then what are the major elements in cyber security then we have some levels through which we can measure the security so what are the those levels then we have some source of threats in our security domain in our uh, cyber security domain then what are the major attacks and what are the attacks which are actually there in the real time scenario then we have some common attacks which we all started in our theory and as well as in, in our uh, personal experience with using the social media then how we defend us from those attacks then what are the major challenges or uh, the key point of the challenges in in different domain with respect to the cyber security and how we can analyze the risk overall comparatively how we can analyze the risk in each and in our in our uh, uh, day to day life that we will discuss at the end so this is just the outline of the complete uh, session but we will break the session like only the basic part will be the initial session then we will move on to the real time attacks and as far as the research is concerned or uh, research related concepts are concerned we will move on that section after the break so uh, yeah what is basically data what is basically information because if we are in the cyber world if we are in the uh, world wide web world then we have information and this information is of is of like each and every individual have some information so that information is to be referred as data so the information it can be physical or it can be the electronic one the information which can be anything like your personal details or we can say your profile your profile on the social media your mobile number your biometric or the details which reflect your identity that is basically a information of an individual with respect to the organization the same few features we may concern and we have like the name of the organization the detail of employee of the organization or the portal of the organization or which reflect the identity of an organization so that reflect reflect basically the information of an individual or of an organization it include your complete detail complete details are like your personal identification information what exactly the personal identification information is like which linked to a specific individual that is like your name your email id your postal address your date of birth or any uh, pan number driving license number your account details or the thing which which are actually related to you that is personal identification information then we have some more information which are related to us but they are not personally like they are not personal identification information but sometimes they relate with with us like we have zip code or we have area code or city gender age or sometimes we tweet on the uh, social media that also indirectly uh, uh, divert towards us so that these are basically the detail if we can look the broader view of personal identification information then it include our aadhaar number our credit card details the social media details bank account details and the personal health information so basically pii is any data that can be used to identify a specific individual or we can say uh, we have a social security numbers or mailing addresses or email addresses and the phone numbers that has commonly been considered as pii that is personal identification information but technology basically expands it expands its, its scope and uh, with the, with this expansion the PA, pii include our login ids no oh is there any issue all right the login ids the social media posts the digital images or we can say the geo location images or sorry geo locations the biometric or the behavioral data 
that can be classified as PII. Basically, PII, this personal identification information, include lot many details like biometric identifiers, like a biometric, which we, we give us a biometric in our Aadhaar or in our offices for punching. Then we have social security numbers, we have account numbers, we have our date of birth, or we have our vehicle license. They, this, these all details which actually specify an individual or which can easily help us to identify an individual that is termed that included in PII. So if we have PII and if we have number of details and we all are using, we all are using social media nowadays. So if we can look at this image, which is there on the screen, with, with this image, at least we can come to know that each and every movement, each and every second, we are generating some data with the help of internet. And as far as 2020 and 21 now, now over around 4.4 million, billion, sorry, not million, that is billion internet users are there. And 83% increases in the number of people using internet in just five years. If we can just look at this image with a small calculation, which we can easily identify that we have around 12 lakh new data producing on social media, with the help of users each day. Or we can say around 682 million tweets per day. We have around more than 4 million hours in context uploaded on YouTube every day. So as far as the data is concerned, it is, it is, it is increasing day by day. And because data is on social media, because data is in cyberspace, so we are, we, we are a part of cyberspace because we used to watch YouTube, we used to tweet, we used to go on the social media and it's on Instagram. And uh, as far as the social media is concerned, around 4.3 billion Facebook messages posted daily. Or if we, can, if we ignore the posters, we have likes daily, like millions of likes daily increase the data of Facebook. So as far as the email usage is rising, the mobile data devices are rising, the data, the concept of things, is increasing and because of the things is increasing nowadays the basically our mobile phones our tvs our car everything is connected to each other because of internet they are connected and they are increasing data they are generating a data on the screen or oh, sorry on the web every day every second so because data is increasing so the adverse effect of increasing data can affect our information also because if the data is increasing, the use of information can be done by any other source. They can steal our money with the help of our personal identification details. If a person can know your passwords, if a person can know your personal details, they can easily steal your money from your bank account. They have some procedures, they have some uh, processes for that. But still, if an individual can easily identify your personal details, they can at least process for steal your money. They, they can, they can um, keep a check on your friends and family. They can identify your identity with, or they can use your identity. They can create an account with the help of your personal identity and they can create a spread of spams, malwares, or we can say they can create some junk mails which can spread or we can block a particular network. That can be happened if your personal detail or data can be used by others. They can blackmail the individual if any individual have your identity. So the, this all comes into the data or the information which is there on the cyber. If we can look into the cyber information security, then what exactly it is? Basically, cyber security is a set of practice which intend to keep data secure from unauthorized access, or we can say from the alteration. So cyber security spans so many research area. Basically, cybersecurity includes cryptography. It includes mobile computing. It includes cyber forensic and online social media also. So cybersecurity includes a lot many research area into it. During the first world war, if we can look into the first world war, world war the multi-tier classification system was developed. And keeping in the mind of sensitivity of the information, because information we have to keep our information secure. So with the beginning of the Second World War, 
formally alignment of classification system was done and ln tuning was the one who successfully decrypt the enzyme machine which basically decrypt the information of the internal person and which was used by the german to encrypt their warfare data what is basically basically the encryption encryption means whatever data we have in a simple text form which is converted into a coded form that is the encrypted one so basically it deals with the several different trust aspects of information and its protection basically the cyber security deals with that if we can check into the us government national information glossary they have a specific definition of information security or we can say the cyber security the specific definition is protection of information system against unauthorized access to or modification of information whether in storage processing or transit and against the denial of service to authorized user or the provision of service to unauthorized user include include those measures necessary to detect document and counter such threat what exactly this definition means this definition means that information security basically refer to the process or we can say it refer to that methodology which are designed or we can say implemented to protect a print or electronic or any other form of confidential private and sensitive information that we considered as data from the unauthorized access or we can say the unauthorized use or misuse disclosures or modification of that particular secured data basically in cyber security we have some common category and those common factors are usually network security application security information security and operational security but in cyber security it is basically a practice of defending computers servers your mobile device we can talk about any digital device which having an internet connectivity which having a network in it which having a capability to connect with the network that electronic system they should be secured with the help of cyber security in in that particular device we have data the mysterious attack can be done on that particular device so with the help of security with the help of these uh, scenarios we can help to protect that data which is lie in our computer server or on or on mobile device so it is also known that the information technology security or we can say the electronic information security the term applies in varies of the context or if we can talk about the business they have their own data if we can talk about our business like our mobile we have our own data we, we all want to secure our data or secure our information so as far as cyber security is concerned it includes these factors and these factors are network security what exactly network security is in a practice of securing a computer network from the intruder from the intruder means from the insiders which are which are having an access of that particular system they cannot at least fetch the data which is not of their use whether targeted attacker or the opportunistic malware like in a particular network we are securing all the devices which are connected on that particular network that is network security application security basically focuses on keeping the software and the devices free of threats and the compromised application what are the compromised application compromised applications are those applications which are compromised with other systems so these application could provide access of data and it designed to protect because we can protect these application with the help of application security so we have to maintain that those application to be secured with the help of application security then we have information security also information security is basically focusing on the integrity and the privacy of data for both for storage or for transmission then we have operational security this is also a major category of cyber security and operational security means it include the process and the decision of handling the protected data which is lying our, in our systems which are lying in the in our digital devices without any permission no one can access no one can uh, modify that particular data that can be handled with a operational security umbrella that can be handled under this umbrella 
so if all these factors were there we, uh, then the cyber security include all these thing into it and majorly the element of so cyber security are confidentiality we all know about confidentiality confidentiality means the information which is not disclosed to unauthorized unauthorized means which is which is which is not that particular information doesn't lie to him so that is an unauthorized indiv individual and or entity they can access that particular information so the data which is which is mine that is to be confidential to me not to the others so for example if we can say i have a password of my gmail account but someone saw while i was doing a login into the gmail account so in that case my pa password has been compromised because it, it is taken by the other person it is it can breach my confidentiality the password is is the thing which is which is which actually reflects to me only and if any other person is using my password it means it, it he or she is breaching my confidentiality that is confidentiality means a data which is there with an individual and it can not it can be accessed by other it means they are breaching the confidentiality then we have integrity the major element of cyber security is integrity integrity means maintaining the accuracy and the completeness of data the scheme data cannot be edited or it cannot be used by any other unauthorized person in any unauthorized way for example if an employee leaves leaves the organization then in that case data for that particular employee in all the department like account department or any uh, i mean the status of that particular employee should be job left but that cannot be changed by any individual that cannot be changed by any any unauthorized person it can be changed by the department person like only the admin staff they can change the status of that particular individual it means the addition the, the editing of a uh, individual status cannot be handled by any other the integrity the confidentiality integrity means accuracy should be maintained that cannot be modified by others so that is integrity then we have availability availability is basically the information that is available when needed for example if one need to access the information to a particular employee and to check whether the employee has out if the employee lies in the uh, department or not so in that case that work is done by the organization team like the network operation or 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 with with a specific team or a managing team they have some policies of it to make the in the information of an individual available or not but because these elements are the major elements but these we have some more elements which are related to the these cyber security elements like we have non reputation basically non reputation include the authenticity and integrity into it then we have authenticity also authenticity also include the combination of two these major elements then we have accountability also which are related to the cyber security so as far as non reputation is concerned it means that one party cannot deny receiving a message or a transaction nor can be other party deny sending a message or a transaction for example in a cryptography it is it is basically a sufficient to show that message matches the digital signature signed with the sender private key and that sender could have a send a message and nobody else can have alter it while transmitting so that maintain the integrity as well as the authenticity how they maintain the integrity with the help of the signature and how they maintain the authenticity because they have their private key so non reputation basically include the combination of data integrity and authenticity these are the prerequisite of non reputation then the uh, second the uh, other major uh, major element is authenticity which means that the user who actually using that particular device having a that particular individual is the trusted source if any other person is using that particular device it means it is an it is an unauthorized person so the principle if we follow the guarantee of validity genuinity which reflect as authenticity uh, let's take an example of it if uh, the same example if a sender can send the message along with the digital signature which was generated using the hash value of a message and private key now 
at the receiver side this digital signature is decrypted using the public key generated a hash value and the message is again hashed hash is basically a functionality which can be used for more authenticity for more uh, uh, for making a data more secure for take uh, for making the information more secure and generate a hash value so if two value matches then only the authenticity will confirm then only the genuinity of a particular message in, is confirmed that reflects authenticity then we have accountability also the accountability means it should be a possible to trace the action of an entity or uniquely to that particular entity for example just we discussed the in the integrity section that uh, not every employee should be allowed to change the other employee data for this there is a separate department in an organization that is responsible for making such changes when they receive request for a change or if they receive any uh, any order from the higher authority so these are the few elements which help you out while creating a cyber security scenario but if we talk about the measures of uh, cyber security so uh, broadly in, in on on the basis of the theory broadly we divide four levels of the security measures and these security measures are basically used for protection or or we can say the physical protection of a system or uh, we are just providing a security to the system so we have some foundational security this foundational security basically includes the security policy then we have some agreements on it we have some rules and regulations on it we have some security control governance on it or we have some awareness training on it so that the foundation of security measures should be strong then we have physical security physical security means we have a data center and physically they are pretty secure that so that no one can get stole or no one can uh, uh, get the uh, devices with them so we have to maintain the physical security while measuring the level of security in cyber space then we have yeah i'm not talking about the cyber space but yeah because computers are connected with the cyber so the data lying on the computers is a major security of major uh, reason of providing a security to the to those systems then we have logical security and those logical securities basically include the advanced firewalls or we can say intrusion prevention systems that we discussed in our upcoming slides then we have uh, a highly secured gateway we have patch management system into it they provide us basically a logical security then we have application and data security the application and data security basically include the solution for end user management and the individual application for the database security what exactly the database is wherever the data is stored wherever the managing process of the particular data is saved on the server side securing that particular data is is considered to be as a database security so we basically uh, use for the physical protection of our computer system for human screening so that the user cannot the any unauthorized user cannot access the system that is that comes under physical security if we can talk about the operating system which cannot which can be protected with the accidental or we can say other security breaches that comes under in our logical system and network because the data is on the multiple servers the data is on multiple uh, pieces that particular network is to be secured while measuring the security if we can look the broader view how from where we get the attacks we are the users and attackers are lying somewhere in the network so if if we are the users then how the users can how the attackers can attack us this image is uh, predict that we have attacker in the network and we are single users attacker can attack us with the help of these three attacks like the os attack which is done directly on our systems then we have network attack which is there on in the network because our devices are connected with the network then we have web attack and those web attacks are basically lies on www like, like what what is the major difference between network attack and web attack because if we have a network then we have a web but the slight difference is the application difference 
because network can be created network cannot be created but the network can be redesigned again but web is fixed fixed means we have our devices in our in our home and like we have camera installed in our home those cameras are uh, directly linked with your mobile system and that comes under web because they are passing the information with the help of sensor they are not acknowledge anything they are not getting anything they just linked up and then passing the information from their source to your source so basically os attack commanded only the attack which are done uh, on a, with the help of web server or we, or we can say with the remotely gaining access to the operating system only at that time the os attack is uh, active the executing system commands through the browsers only so the vulnerability of a server or other network connected to the computer or to the os commanding attacks can be minimized with the help of blacklisting or we can say with the forbidden character sequence we have number of prevention techniques to get rid of the os attack but this may happen sometimes because hackers they know how to track the os uh, possibilities because we have number of ports open for forwarding and for transmitting then uh, majorly the network attack is an unauthorized action, action on digital assets with an organizational network basically miscellaneous parties usually execute the network attack to alter or we can say to stall or or we can say to destroy the private data so this can be happened with the help of network attack because they targeted to a particular system with the help of the gain access or or we can say with the help of the internal system or or with the help of internal path and they destroy that particular uh, device with the help of network support so majorly in network attack we have two kind of attack and they are one is passive attack and other one is the active attack basically passive attack this miscellaneous party can just gain the unauthorized access to the network they just monitor it they just capture the data but they cannot modify that data in active attack they can easily modify encrypt or damage the data that is a possibility in our network attack but as far as the web attack is concerned it is just a uh, we can say it they it it usually happens in the big organization and this will happen with the help of sql injection or we can say the cross site attacks so this is a largest security breach in the history which is done with the help of sql and cross site attack in between around 2005 and 2020 that this these attacks are actively uh, operated they actually breach the security of various organization so uh, because we have attack we have data and we are the individual we want to secure our data so if if the attacker is attacking on an individual how they can attack to the individual what exactly the source of of the attackers through which they can attack basically we have two kind of sources we have external source and we have internal source external source means the outsiders are attacking to a internal or to an individual with the help of their hacking with the help of their cracking and hackers have different kind of hats with us if the attacker is attacking ethically it means if he or she have a white hat hacker if they are unethically they are attacking to your system they are black hat hackers and we have gray hackers also which are basically um, working on those organization they uh, they are working ethically and unethically both so we have some script kiddies also which are the external source of the organization and we have cyber terrorists also which are uh, basically connected us with the cyber space and they are attacking indirectly or indirectly to an individual for capturing some some confidential information out of so these are these basically comes under the external attack internal attacks are also there because uh, if your personal information is to be steal that can be steal with the with the cooperation of the individual which is lying nearby you and that is only possible if if it he or she is is in your circle in the employee circle or we can say if you have an hardware failure and you can share your hardware with the other person that is internally you have given your device to the other person to hack or crack the system then we have electronic power fluctuation and natural disaster which basically comes in the internal source of threat because of these effects because of these source our data can be exploited or it can be spread out outside 
so if we if we look into the major source that is government accountability office which is a department of homeland security i captured these major threats they mentioned in their document in 2005 and these are the following threats which are also there in i NIST document, which is basically a guide of supervisory control and the data acquisition and industrial control system security. They provide a description of all these threats. We have these multiple threats are there. They are in the research. They are in the industry, and they are also printed in the manual documents, which actually reflect that these threats are actually lying in our day to day or or in our real time scenario. We have bot network operator. What exactly the bot network operators are? these operators are basically hackers however instead of breaking into the system for the challenging or we can say just just for the sake of uh, capturing with the help of phishing scheme with the help of spamming or with the help of malware attacks the service of these networks are something made available to underground market or we can say they, they just create a denial of service attack with the help of bot network operators these operators are basically create a scenario of ddos attack or or we can say the phishing attack and they can create this threat into the cyber world then we have criminal groups also these criminal groups are basically they attack the system for their monetary gain gain or we can say specifically they target one organization or they targeted that organization and they create some spams phishing or or malware and they just identify it online and they create some online frauds that 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 comes under the criminal group then we have foreign intelligence services these foreign intelligence services use the cyber tools as a part of their information gathering or we can say the espionage activities in addition they also do the several notation are aggressively working to develop the information warfare or we can say they have a program or they have a capability to capture the data of individuals and they just provide a serious impact by disrupting the supply or we can say the communication or they just discard the network so that it can harm the military or we can say the citizen of the country so that they cannot communicate that basically happens in this group with the foreign intelligence service then we have one more group that is hacker groups and hackers are basically they sometimes they use for just breaking the uh, uh, rules and regulation or the protocols and capture the information or they just target to the victim and according to that victim requirement they capture the information with the help of different sources with the help of different tools by hacking or cracking they just captured the information of, of the individual and they create the attack then this is one more category that is insiders insider are always which are nearby you and they capture the your personal information they target a victim and they steal the information according to their requirement then we have fishers basically these are the individual or we can say the small group who execute the phishing schemes in an attempt to steal the iron to steal the information or just having a monetary gain of it so phishing basically include the spamming or spyware or malware kind of objectives they have then they have spammers basically spammers are those those individual or we can say or organization who who disturb the basically a a small network or email with a hidden or a false information they send you a email with a spamming mail and after clicking on that particular email attachment your information can be directly sent to that particular Uh, uh hacker or or we can say that particular user who spam that email into your account so that is that also comes under the denial of service issues they are created by the spammers basically then we have spyware and spyware and malware are the individual or we can say the organization with the miscellaneous carrying out the attack against the user by providing and disturbing the small network it they also include the computer viruses worms or we can say the harmful files with they with basically spread out with the help of the zip form or kind of thing then we have terrorist issues also which are basically targeted to destroy a particular group or they destroy a national security out of it they just target the region they damage it and they create uh, issues out of the particular region so this this 
uh, details I found, find out with the, uh, from the Government Accountable Office of Department of Homeland Security and that these points are mentioned there um, in 2005. But now these are updated. But yeah, these are there. These are the few threads which are actually uh, categorized in some groups so that uh, if we can look into the uh, threats, so, so we have number of threats which actually hampered our security. So attack on privacy. Basically, we we have data, we have privacy, we want to maintain a privacy, and we have some attacks also which are basically done in some kind of scenario like spamming, phishing, or we can uh, just identify the information or targeting someone. So this is these are few points. How basically they can uh, they can be implemented. They can be implemented with the help of profile cloning. We all know about profile cloning, and the profile cloning is basically the just cloning, or we can say is identifying a theft of existing user's profile credentials and create a fake profile using these credentials. Basically, it is a profile cloning. In in this way. We can steal the information of an existing user or we can create a new similar fake profile with the detail which I have of a particular individual. So after cloning a profile, it will send a friend request to your friend or we can say to a victim. Like if I'm targeting someone, so what I can do is I just create a fake profile of an individual which you may know. And then after sending you a friend request, after gathering an information of you, I just send a request and get access to your account. and not exactly the complete access but yeah since the clone profile look more like to a genuine profile or we can say a friend of a victim will tend to accept a friend request from a clone without noticing that it is a duplicate profile or it is not their friend profile so this is basically a adverse or we can say a chance to publish a misleading content to a, a victim friend audience using the clone profile to damage his good profile. So this may happen sometimes, or we we, or we have already faced these kind of issue in past two years. I mean, uh, that is there, but now Facebook have provided the security for this kind of attack. This is basically a profile cloning attack. Then we have a password identification issues through which the individual information can be fetched. It can be fetched with the help of stealing. It can be fetched with guess, guessing, or we can say by watching or trying a random keys or we can we can also in technical words we can say with the help of brute force attack we can fetch the password of an individual we can access their account and we can easily access their uh, the zone which is basically secured by an individual with their passwords so this is also a way to capture a personal information then we have phishing attack phishing attack is basically a attack or we can say it is a type of social engineering attack often used to steal the user data including the login credentials or we can say the credit card number so that the other ones can purchase a lot many things with your credit card numbers and it also occurs when an attacker basically um, uh, captured the trusted identity and duped the victim into opening an email or we can say with the help of instant messaging or with the help of text messaging the receipt is then ticked or you can say they can click the miscellaneous link which can lead to the installation of a malware they freeze into the system as a part of ransom attack kind of thing and they reveal the sensitive information that can be happened with the help of phishing attacks then we have major attacks which are there in 2005 to 10 and they are like cross site scripting attack basically this type of uh, security you know, this uh, cross site scripting is basically a security vulnerable typical found in web applications not in others basically this xss attack enable attacker to inject basic basically they try i mean uh, the the hacker can try or the attacker can try to inject client side scripting into the web page viewed by the other user the cross site scripting vulnerability may be used by attackers to bypass the access control such as in the same uh, region origin policy or which is designed to segregate the different website from each other this cross site scripting vulnerability normally allow an attacker to target the victim 
to carry out any action that the user can able to perform and to access any of the user data so if a victim user has a privilege to access within the application then the attack attacker also might be able to gain the full control over the application functionality and the data with the help of cross site scripting attack so majorly this attack has some prevention measures nowadays the prevention measures are there and lot many browsers are also having this these prevention measures but still the contextually output encoding and escaping of the string input which is there in the html and the html we have css in that we have to take care of the encoding and decoding part of the strings input then we have some cookies securities should be enabled in our browsers and nowadays these scripting uh, like this the uh, cookies securities are there in our browsers so that the client can easily secure their browsers and they can protect them with the help before uh, with this xss attack then we have one more major attack that is sql injection attack and this sql injection is basically a code injected technique which is used to attack to data driven application in which miscellaneous sql statements are inserted into the entry of the field of execution and basically these uh, this injection is uh, destroy your complete database because sql is a sequential query language which is related to the database and they can easily destroy the complete database they can fetch the information according to their use they can use web hacking technique with the help of sql injection and also they can view the uh, uh, things which are related to the uh, database so basically these injection technique has to be uh, exploited but now these uh, sql injection are protected in some some kind of scenarios so these sql injection uh, technique were uh, actively used because the sql injection usually occurs when you ask the user for input like uh, username or user id and instead of the name and id so the user gives you an sql statement that you will unknowingly run on your database and they can use some kind of keywords like a hacker might get an access of a username and a password in the database by simple inserting or or equal to kind of keywords and they can easily access the username and passwords and they can access your account this kind of sql injection can hamper the database itself so we have different these few attacks were there in the uh, i mean in the real scenario and they were executed in in the past but we have some real time attack information also so these real time attack information if uh, if organizers allow me to uh, stop here because uh, because afterwards we have a uh, four technical uh, issues of attack and information so um am i mean is there anyone who can uh, i mean because after this uh, we we are uh, jumping to the real time attack scenario and they are related to the research papers and kind of thing which are which are actually happened in the past research so can i con uh, should i continue or should i break for a moment take a break for a moment all right i think hello yes uh, let's check uh so should i continue sir or uh, should i take a break for a moment because because after that the major challenges were there in the slides uh, i think it would be better then we stop and we start within 6 7 minutes right yeah it would be fine with it from your side yeah that is okay fine. thank you we'll, we'll start at uh, 5 10 then all right thank you so much okay. thank you So all the participant, uh, you need not to leave the meeting. We will start at 5 10 sharp. You can take a break of 5 to 7 minutes.
continue? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay, let, let us begin with the second session. So, uh, am I audible? Yeah. Yes, you are. Okay, so as far as the real time scenario attacks are there in the, uh, in the past research, if we can look into the research, then we have, uh, like in 2016 in India, we have an attack that is major bank debit card pin attack and this and this attack was uh, 3.2 million debit cards are compromised and the uh, banks were SBI, SBI, HDFC, ICIC, Yes Bank and Equus. The breach is said that uh, two, uh, I mean they have, or they have originated in a malware and they introduced in the system of Hitachi payment service and enabling that fraud setter to steal the information allow to steal the fund. This is basically entered with the Hitachi, which provide an ATM point of scale with the other services. So this attack is added into the uh, systems and around 3.2 million debit cards were compromised at that time. Then if we can look into the uh, past research or, or we can say the past issues, like in March 2008, in US, around 134 million credit cards exposed through SQL injection to install spywares on the Heartland data system. This basically heart this is basically a Heartland payment system, which is uh, a US-based payment processing and technology provider. They founded in 1997. This system got exploited with the SQL injection, and they inject a spyware into it. Because of that around 134 million credit cards were ex exposed in 2008. So there, there is one more issue. That issue is EST soft. And this is basically happening in July and August 2011 in South Korea. So uh, the information, the personal information of 35 million South Koreans were exposed after the hacker breaches in the security of the popular software provider and this popular software provider basically provide the softwares to the to uh, to the persons and because of this service provide uh, because of this service around 35 million south koreans were exposed and their information is the personal information is fetched and circulated because and they uh, reach to the uh, they breach that security of the personal uh, personal data then we have monster.com that is this is the next attack which is done in 2007 and this is basically a confidential information of 1.3 million job seekers were stolen the data which they uploaded on the monster.com as for their job seeking the data or the information of an individual were captured from there after attacking to monster.com that happens in 2007 in august then this is also an attack that is Fidelity National Information Service attack. And this this uh, is done with the help of Caste Check Service. They stole basically 2.3 million customers' record, including their credit card information, their banking information, and their personal information in 2007. So these kind of breaches were heaven. In, uh, they already done in past few years, we can say. In 2017 also, we have this WannaCry ransom attack, and this was a worldwide cyber attack in 2017 by WannaCry ransom crypto worm, which targeted computer running the Microsoft Windows operating system by encrypting data and demand ransom payment in a Bitcoin cryptocurrency. The, although Microsoft provide some patches of the new versions, but for securing OS, but the older system, they got corrupted with this ransomware attack. Ransomware is basically a malware that employs the, employ basically encryption to hold a victim's information at ransom. A user or we can say the organization, the critical data is encrypted so that they, they cannot access their file databases or um, the other information or the application. Uh, this ransom is demanded to provide the access also. So uh, ransomware is often designed to spread across a network and target database and the file server. And also they can uh, get the access of the organization 
system also so this is basically a growing threat generating billions of dollar in the payment to the, the cyber criminals or we can say uh, they are infecting and they are damaging the system or they are damaging the many organizations also so how this ransomware basically work this ransomware work with the asymmetric encryption what is asymmetric encryption this is a cryptography that use a pair of keys to encrypt and decrypt the file so the public and private pair of keys are uniquely generated by the attacker for a victim and then with a private key to decrypt the file stored in the attacker server so the attacker make a private key available to the victim only after the ransom is paid ransom is basically a money is to be paid through a scheme or recent ransomware issues so that is not always in the case but but yeah uh, without an access to a private key it is nearly impossible to decrypt the file that are being held for ransom so many variations of ransoms were there in research or there in market also oftenly the ransom were well, they spreading the malware targeting the systems and they asking a money from that they are targeting a uh, successfully exploiting and dropping the miscellaneous issues in the system not issues the yeah the, they are basically infecting the system and they with the help of searching the vulnerable files the microsoft word document or we can say images and various data which is related to the microsoft because this issue comes with the help of the operating system although this happens only in the microsoft operating system in the older version but the people who are updating their versions this issue was not happened with their system why this ransomware is spreading here and there in a speed in uh, like spreading like anything because they are evolving to counter the prevention preventive technology for the several reasons and the reasons were they can easily available to the malware kits that can be used to create new malware samples on demand or we can say they used to know a good generic interruptions to create a cross platforms so that uh, so that uh, like cross platforms like um, ransom have 32 user uh, node js with javascript so basically these attacks were only possible with a cross platform ransom and the use of new technology is also a major issue because encrypting the complete disk instead of selecting file so these are some issues because of these issues the ransomware is is highlighted in uh, from so many from uh, last year and and uh, if you can look at this uh, table this table i captured from one lab that is and they give some information about like we have number of countries listed in, into the table and they have a, um, a ransom attack possibility already happened in 2015 16 2016 17 and and that it shows that in india the ransomware attack is also increasing because because a uh, lot many users are using these like pirated softwares or pirated uh, uh, operating system and this is happened because of the pirated version of the operating system then these this is basically the cyber attack around the globe in in each and every country we have lot many cyber attacks and these cyber attacks are increasing like anything and these are some uh, headlines of the newspapers which i captured from the web and the it reflects that number of attacks are happening in around the globe because uh, of the cyber issues because the data is capturing the data is basically using with an unauthorized access with a number of uh, security threats so if we can look a, a short quick glance because we have already discussed about the various threats and uh, these are the major threats which we can see everywhere like we have viruses like uh, now viruses we all know about viruses but still a virus a small definition of viruses a virus is a computer code or we can say a program which is capable of affecting your computer data badly by corrupting or destroying them like uh, if if we have any hardware device which we connect to our system and if we connect that system and it can destroy our system it is to be considered that as virus the computer virus is actually a miscellaneous software program or a malware that when infected your system or replicate itself 
by modifying other computer program and inserting its own code. So that is to be considered as virus. Basically, virus fragment a code and embed in a legitimate program. So often downloaded or with the help of email, this virus can be activated because active component on a web page. Then we have a one more threat security that is WARM. WARM and virus are altogether same, but there is only a thin line difference. Like a computer WARM is a type of malware that spread copies of itself from a computer to computer. If we have a WARM in a network, then it can spread itself into the complete network. A WARM can replicate itself without any human interaction. And virus need interaction because it need a click. It need a downloadable accessibility. So when it, it does not need any attachment itself to the software program to order a cause or a damage. So basically, uh, uh, we use a self replicating code in the WARM. And for avoiding the WARM, we use this swapping mechanism. What exactly this mechanism is in terms of computer, in terms of computing, it is referred as a function that loads and execute a new process. Basically, the current process will wait and then wait for a child process to terminate and then continue or execute the other process. That will help us out to get rid of the bombs. And it can create a new sub processes require enough money with the, both the child and the current program can be executed. Then we have spywares. Spywares are basically any software that install itself on the computer and start covering, monitoring your online behaviors without your knowledge or your permission. This is basically a spyware. And spyware is a kind of malware that secretly gather the information about the person, or we can say the organization, and relay that data with the other party. Secretly, they just monitored you and they passed your information to, the, to their origin. So they are basically spywares. Then we have Trojan horses. Trojan horses are usually considered as a type of malware that are often distinguished as a legitimate software. Trojan can be employed by the cyber chief or we can say uh, uh, through the hackers, they try to gain the access of the user system or we can say try to access uh, of a victim system. Users are typically tricked by some form of social engineering into the loading or we can say the executing the chosen on their system. So basically in chosen horse, we have a code segment that misuse its environment and it seems to be innocent enough, but it is not actually. It, they have their unexpected behavior in it. So they include kind of spywares also for a browser window also, and they have images through which we can execute the chosen horse. Then we have tab door uh, security thread. And this tab door is a kind of secret entry point into the program that allow anyone can gain access to any system without going through a usual security access procedure. Like they are not going to the direct way. They are going indirectly or, at, or entering into the system with a, with a, with a, with a bypass route. Or, uh, or we can say a tab door is a method of bypassing a normal authentication method or authentication process. That is basically a tab door. And we all know about Skyhub. That is basically an example of tab door. We are accessing a number of publications with using this attack. So it is basically inserting a method of breaching the security in a system and they can they could be included in a compiler form. Then we have logic bombs. We all know about logic bombs. These are basically a piece of often miscellaneous code that is intentionally inserted into the software. These logic bombs execute their functions or they can launch their payloads once a certain condition is met upon the termination of an, uh, an any process. Basically, uh, in logic form, we have set of in instructions and secretly, if the instruction uh, target met, they just abort the system. That is basically a logic form. And we have some common internet attacks also. And uh, these common internet attacks are like denial of service attack, 
these denial of service attack are meant uh, for shut down a machine or we can say shutting down a network and making inaccessible to that particular network to its intended users so dos accomplish this uh, because of flooding or target to a traf target or we can say a traffic to a particular system and sending the information to the triggered so that uh, the users who really want to access a particular server they cannot easily access that server because of its unavailability so that is denial of service and that ha this happens with flooding the traffic towards a, a particular server then we have intrusive threats and these threats refer to any unauthorized activity on the digital network these network intrusions often involve stealing the values or we can say stealing the network resources and almost always in the security network on their data and they also include the information threats they basically steal the information of an individual or of an organization then we have viral threats they are basically just creating a number of threats out of it and we have this defaced threats also so the web defaced threats is an attack in which mysterious parties penetrate as a website and replace a content on the site with their own messages so unexpected change on 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 that particular file can mean the security compromise and might they signal the defacement attack so these are the few attacks which are basically happened in in uh, in uh, in some scenarios and we commonly known about it the virus the worms the trojan horse but the but the basic technicality of all these uh, uh, attacks were there in my documentation then we have how the cracking a network how a particular network is to be cracked by the attacker basically the attacker's mentality is always like to gather the information and the information is gathered with the help of lot many uh, steps i mean we have various steps to capture the information of an individual so information gathering is basically is to be considered as the first step to crack that the uh, network or to access the network or to uh, have a vulnerability in in a particular network before the target network and the scanned using vulnerability scanners testers must be well aware about the assets or involved in a scope of testing so they prioritize their asset with the help of scanning so the basic social engineering attack is to be performed for gathering the information and in this context the information security the social engineering and in the psychological manipulation of the people into performing the action they basically captured the confidential information after entering into the social uh, social group and this is uh, this is differs from the social engineering mm. uh not not exactly uh, i mean the social engineering having some social aspects which are related to it because with the help of social engineering attack only they can access the information of an individual so attacker having a mindset to just crack the in, to just got the access they initially want to get the information of an individual whomsoever they are targeting to so uh, initially they just captured the information then they have code scanning uh, uh, stage and in the port scanning what actually attack attacker will do they just scan the port with the help of some applications which are designed to probe a server or a host for a open port we have number of tools available which just give you a scanning that how many ports are available in that particular network so such an application may be used by the administrator to verify the security policies in their network and by the attacker to identify the network services running on the host or exploiting the vulnerability so usually attacker try to capture the information first then they just scan the ports so that which are which ports are open so that we can uh, we can have a uh, opportunity to capture the information of a particular system or a, of a particular server then we have network emulation also and in this uh, it is basically a computing activity in which Usernames and the information on groups, or we can say share and services and network computer are retrieved. It should not be confused with the network mapping. This emulation and network mapping both are different. Which are basically network mapping is basically a relative information about which servers are connected to a specific 
network like whatever operating system runs on them that is network mapping but in network emulation it is discovered of it is basically a discovery of host or device on a network and this tends to use to discover with the help of protocol protocols are like icma or snmp to gather the information and they may also scan the various ports to just just gain the remote access so that they can gain the information gain the access and they capture the major servers with the help of this approach then after capturing or after gaining the access they just keep a root access after gaining they just keep a root access they are not just manipulating anything they are just checking the routes and how they get the major root access after that they just gain the information they just gain the path of the major server then they leave a backdoor entry so that whenever they want they can enter or they can bypass the authenticity i can and they can enter into your database and then they can modify the system logs easily so it will in if it is in a network side then we have to create some parameters or we have to create some defense policies so that with the help of network no one can capture the major information which are residing in the servers because these are the basic steps usually attackers can perform they just capture the information they just scan the port then they uh, uh, gain the access remotely they uh, uh, clear out the route and then they can easily uh send a backdoor or open a backdoor entry for them so that they can access the logs and the files so for uh, for for preventing their system preventing their network we have to uh, we have to consider about some parameters for the defense purposes and for defense we require antivirus protection like if the antivirus in antivirus is there in your system then if you have anything which you injected and they have a virus into it or if you if you apply any any pirated uh, uh, application or if you can uh, just open the pirated application into your system they just stop you of implementing that particular uh, uh, application or they just stop you for opening any file into a corrupted uh, hardware if you are injecting into your system so we required antivirus protection not even our phone, not in, even our systems we have antivirus facility in our phones also because nowadays antivirus protection is given to our phones mobile phones smartphones this antivirus basically kind of software which used to prevent scan detect and delete the virus from your system or for your from your digital device and once it is installed then most antivirus softwares run automatically in the background and they provide you a real time protection against the viruses attack right then what else we required just to defend ourselves or 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 our defense our organization or for our system or for our uh, network we required firewalls these firewall is basically uh, like usually in computing firewall is a network security system that monitors and control the incoming and outgoing of network traffic based on the predetermined security rules so firewall typically establish a barrier between the trusted network and the untrusted network such as internet because we are using internet every day and we we may not know that we are using a trusted network or an untrusted network uh, then we have we also uh, use vpn vpn is virtual private network and this virtual private network extended a private network across a public network and enables user to send or receive the data across the shared or public network as if there are computing this uh, devices were directly connected to a private network so vpn basically provide us a service for a better connectivity with the trusted network then we have intrusion detection system and intrusion prevention system intrusion detections are basically used to intend like they just detect whether there is a malware or there is a issue or not there is a virus or not they just detect it and prevention system are basically help us to prevent them so we have number of tools are there for in, uh, intrusion detection and prevention but uh, this uh, detection system is considered as a software application that monitored a network or we can say a system for miscellaneous activity on the policy violation and any 
intrusion activity uh, which is violated that is to be reported to the administration that is why we required intrusion detection policies in our system so that whatever we are doing that should be in a secured environment and we are sending our information or managing our information securely then we can also because intrusion detection if detection system are there then we, we we should also go for the prevention system and prevention system is basically a network security threat prevention technology that examine the network traffic flow to detect and prevent vulnerability exploits so they, they this basically prevent our file uploading and data leakage and these prevention like because the whatever virus we have the antivirus create a signature of it and prevention system basically they provide uh, information of creating a signature like this particular virus have this kind of signature this kind of footstep of that particular viruses so that is to be added into the system and they can easily detect the another virus which is which having a same feature then we have identity based security and this identity based security is a type of security that focuses on the access of digital information or we can say the service based on authentic authenticated identity of an individual and it ensure that the user of these digital services are entire what they have received so in 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 this identity based information we require these three a's and these are authentication authorization and accountability so these are some parameters through which we can defend ourselves and we have also filtering technique because uh, uh, these filtering technique basically help us for filtering or 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 we can say they help us to set some rules for us we have url filtering that is limit that basically provide us a limit access by comparing web traffic against the database to prevent employee from access of uh, uh, harmful sites such as phishing or we can say we have uh, i mean we have a pool from where we can filter it out and we have number of tools also for url filtering so they can prevent an employee from accessing an unproductive site then we have http filtering and this http filtering basically a uh, basically works on somewhat kind of content filtering solutions for an internet filtering uh, with uh, secure cell layers inspection and uh, its purpose is to inspect the content of encrypted transport mechanism in order to detect any hard harmful or mysterious codes that may be masked by encryptions or we can say to identify the potential breaches to accept it use these policies so these this is uh, these are the few uh, filtering technique and we have one more technique that is content filtering content filtering is basically uh, refer to uh, as an internet filtering and uh, it is basically restrict or we can say we can control the content which we know and specially we mention that material that content on the email or or we can say we have this provision on our email accounts like if we we just uh, add the word spam or or we just add the word job whatever emails are coming from the job they are just filtered to the other inbox like they just uh, directly land to the spam box so that kind of filtering we can use these techniques for just defending ourselves with uh, with the exploitation then we have firewalls these are the major thing they are basically a first line of defense and uh, the firewall uh, basically they have like uh, usually one of many security tools to control or regulate the network traffic and we have some policies out of it and according to those policies we just regulate it according to our organization network and we just create a first line defense with the help of firewall so these firewall can help us to just 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 to give us a sake of security but yeah sometime hackers are so tricky they can uh, they can uh, crack the firewall uh, firewall defenses but for for that we have other things to be work on and usually how this particular firewall can work when the firewall uses the packet filtering or we can say the packet attempt to the entire network are run against the group of filters so these filters remove the packet and that matches with a certain identified thread and then allow the others to to their intended destinations so basically uh, firewall use this block 
packet or we can say the packet filtering kind of technique and for that they required the source ip address the range of the address the source of ip port and that can be analyzed with the help of monitoring the firewall attack whatever firewall attacks are happened in the past they just monitored that they have some ip addresses range they have some destination ip port they have some protocols on it and with the help of these uh, few common protocols we can we can also uh, sorry these common ports we can also help us our firewall to protect us because uh, if if we can uh, look into the past we are using http in our urls but nowadays we are using https it means 443 is a pro port which is open all the time and uh, the firewall are basically uh, software or we can say uh, hardware that work as a filtration system from uh, basically or uh, data attempting to enter into your computer or we can say into your network so uh, this firewall basically scan the packets with the help of these some blocks so that the miscellaneous code or we can say the attacks which are trying to attack the network that cannot be easily entered into the network and we have several different ways of uh, securing the firewall also because firewall is basically monitoring the network traffic so we use packet filtering, we use proxy services, we use stateful infection, uh, in inspections through which we can uh, strengthen our firewall services and we can protect ourselves, our network from the firewall. Basically, these firewall can also help us to control, to protect from the backdoor entries, from denial of service kind of attack and from macros also. So we have uh, various issues through which the firewall can help us and firewall can also help us with the remote log unauthorized remote lockings spams viruses the firewall can help us to protect our system our network uh, from the outside world from the outside cyber world which are trying to attack a particular organization then we have intrusion detection and prevention system we had a little discussion before uh, before two slides about the uh, intrusion and de detection system this basically a broader term which describes the application security practice which used to mitigate the attack the basically in intrusion uh, detection and prevention system the first is to reactive measures that identify and mitigate the ongoing attack using an intrusion detection system and it is able to identify the malwares it may be frozen it may be black door it may be rootkit it may be anything so they detect with the help of their services and after that they just manipulate the user into revealing the sensitive information usually attackers can do that kind of thing but intrusion detect detection basically used to just detect a particular attack and then in the next phase like in the in the prevention they you they the, the second uh, work is to be implemented that is proactive security measures so that uses the intrusion prevention system and for for preemptively block applications attack or various kind of injections can also be also be uh, uh, what we can say also be prevented help of intrusion prevention system if we look into the theoretical concept of intrusion detection and prevention system we have number of file systems for there so uh, if 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 i talk about intrusion detection system it is an hardware device or we can say the software application that uses uh, that basically used to know the intrusion signature so that it can de detect and analyze both kind of network traffic which is normal traffic and which one is the uh, abnormal traffic and this is done through with the help of few few uh, kind of signatures like we have system file comparison against malware signatures we have scanning process processes that detect the sign of harmful pattern we have monitoring and behavior of detect malware intenders we have monitoring system settings and configuration which usually help us just to detect them and with the help of this detection we have some uh, or or if if any other um, uh, packet can violating the security issues or if it can creating some issues so that kind of a pattern or we can say that kind of signatures is to be detected by the detection system then the prevention system comes into the uh, space like the these uh, 
three essential security functions that is monitoring detecting and responding for monitoring usually the detection detection system is uh, is active for detecting the detection system is active and for responding this prevention system can comes into the uh, comes into the picture so if uh, prevention system is there so we have first detection system should be there then the prevention system can work upon it after detection they just analyzed it that this particular signature is is a not is is a abnormal activity then what detection system will do they have some different kind of types they just identify the type of that particular signature like it is a network based uh, uh, intrusion prevention we have to apply or wireless in intrusion prevention we have to apply or network behavior analysis we have to done or the host based intrusion prevention system has to be implemented so they have a different kind of packages through which they can analyze the signature of a particular attack and after that the detection procedure is to be implemented with the help of some rules and policies so that they can detect and they can uh, report it to the administration as well as they report it to the market so that they can be added in the number of antiviruses and uh, they, uh, they they the prevention measures should be taken in the future uh, future time then this intrusion detection system is a is a kind of software and hardware which is is uh, uh, we use for detecting and preventing but they cannot provide us some major preventions we have to use gateway anti malware and this gateway is basically a computer that sits between the network or the application the gateway convert information or we can say the data or other communication from one protocol or format to another basically a router may perform some of the function of the gateway uh, and uh, an internet gateway can transfer communication between an enterprise network and the internet because this enterprise often use some protocols on their local area network and they differ from those of the internet so basically gateway will often act as a protocol converter so that the user can send and receive communication over the internet and a product or we can say a feature of use of uh, different kind of techniques they apply on it and the network gateway can um, provide the interoperability between network and the devices which are connected to that so we have protocol translators we have matchers or we have fault isolators which are basically gather the information and a network gateway required to establish of mutually acceptable administrative procedures between the network and using the gateway so this network having a number of set of protocols and these set of protocols can help us out to detect whether i mean uh, each and every uh, organization have their own uh, gateways the network gateway usually act as a proxy server or we can say they sometimes they act as a firewall also so on internet in in a microsoft window the internet connection sharing feature allow a computer to act as a gateway by offering a connection between the internet and the and the internal network so this gateway contains millions of signatures in it so that that is the only way they can they can protect us from the uh, from the un unknown behaviors by directional scanning and web email services they have some set of protocols with them they have some uh, extensions with them so that they can detect whether this is this particular incoming having a uh, uh, virus with them or not so we required the gateways also but in this pandemic situation this pandemic has created a new challenge for the lot many businesses as well as for individual also they they are adapted from the current ongoing trends working from home is a big issue and companies are basically using their digital transformation and the cyber security at the unprecedented risk so this is a major challenge right now nowadays but as far as the research as far as the theory or as far as, far as the um, uh, security parameters were concerned we have number of challenges and one of the challenge major challenges ransomware attack and this ransomware is become popular i mean this is this was popular from uh, 2019 onwards but yeah it is a major challenge in 2020 itself because according to the cyber security 
the uh, form uh, like uh, uh, one of the one form is uh, sofis form about uh, they declared that 82% of organization were hit by ransomware in last 6 months and this ransomware attack involved hacking into a user data and preventing them from accessing it until the ransom amount is paid so that this ransom um, attack are critical and for individual and user but more of business because who can't access the data for running their daily operations however uh, the most ransomware attack and the attack attackers doesn't release the data even after the payment so this attack was there in the picture and this is the major challenge our various researchers are working on it various variety of ransom were there in the research but still it was not easily detectable because if the if because uh, the maximum people are in a use they 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 try to use the pirated one because we have a maximum accessibility with the pirated versions but they usually uh, float us to the ransom attack then we have iot attack that is internet of things attack and according to the uh, internet of things analytics there will be about 11. billion iot devices by 2022 so iot devices are computing they have sensors they are digital they are mechanical devices so that is why they can be autonomously transmitting data over the network and um, example of iot devices like your desktop your laptops your mobile phones your smart security devices uh, as Uh, and the adoption of iot devices is increasing day by day because we are using cameras at our home we are using smart tvs the challenge it is a big challenge in the cyber security world because iot devices can be easily compromised and they they are they are capturing the sensitive data but they are not on the safeguard position they have these devices are not much secure so this is a big challenge in cyber security because the access uh, gaining uh, access to a particular device which is there in at your home is easy then we have cloud attacks these cloud attacks are basically um, like uh, we have our personal data or the professional data on clouds and hacking a cloud platform to steal the user data is also a one of the challenge in cyber security or we all are aware about the i cloud hacks which expose the private photos of the celebrities and if such an attack is carried out on an enter enterprise data then it can create a massive threat for a particular organization or we can say for for a particular system so that is also a major challenge for hacking a personal data through the on the cloud then we have phishing attack phishing attack is uh, as we already discussed about it is a social engineering attack and they can steal the user information with the help of their login credentials and they got they can steal the uh, account details or the credit card numbers it is also unlike like the uh, ransom attack the hacker um, usually gain the access to the confidential user data but they does not block it instead uh, they use it for their own advantages such as online shopping or we can say the legal money transfer the phishing attack are prevalent among the hackers as they can exploit the user data until the users find it out about it and the phishing attack remain one the major challenge in the cyber security world right then we have uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency attack while blockchain and cryptocurrency might not mean uh, much uh, to the average of internet users but these technology are the huge deal for business and uh, attack on these framework poses a considerably challenges in cyber security because it can compromise the customer data and the business operations so these technology have surprised their infancy and stage but they have yet not reached at the advanced secure stages although blockchain technology is a uh, is highly secured but still they have some loopholes but yeah uh, because they nowadays uh, various governments are thinking about to implementing uh, cyber security in the bank uh, in the bank environment but uh, because we don't have uh, we don't we, uh, we don't have uh, the major uh, security aspects although uh, people are claiming like blockchain technology is the highest secured uh, secured system but we if we have risk 
then we have loopholes and and they can be easily hacked or cracked by the uh, by the attackers so this is also a one major challenge in the research uh, for the research oriented purposes then we have software vulnerabilities even the most advanced softwares have some vulnerabilities that might be for significant challenges to the cyber security and uh, this is basically uh, the adoption of digital devices now is more and even before the individual or the enterprises they usually have they they usually require some updates of a particular software like if i have a device at my home i need the updation updated version of that particular device but usually we ignore that updation we ignore the new version and we carry on with the older version so this may create the software vulnerability so this is also a challenge in cyber uh, cyber world then we have machine learning and ai attacks well uh, these attacks are basically based on the technology have proven that highly beneficial for the massive development in various sectors so it has its vulnerability as well so these technologies can be exploited by the unlawful individual to carry out the cyber attack and poses threats to the business so these technology can be used to identify the high value targets among the large data set and machine learning and ai attack is the another big concern in in the research because sophisticated attacks might prove to be too difficult and to handle due to the lack of cyber security expertise in in uh, various scenarios so then we have one more policy that is by od policy and this is basically a bring your own device policy for the employees who are working in the like work from home kind of scenario so having such system poses multiple challenges in cyber security because our data is saved on our system and now the system is online now the system is in on network so the outdated and the version of the software it is already an excellent medium of for hacker to access it since the method is being used for personal and professional reasons but the hacker can easily access the confidential business data or the individual personal data so these devices make it easier to access your private network if their security is compromised so the organization should let go for this policy and provide a secure devices to the employees so that they can be easily secure so what exactly we should not do while uh, while be on the in the cyber world we cannot share our personal information but because we are living in this world and we can we will share our email ids phone numbers pictures and location but we should be aware about it that let's not share the details with the unknown persons then we have some credentials like password we cannot share our passwords with anyone then we cannot and one more thing we should be aware about it like we cannot click, click on any link which is provided by the social media sites to us these are few things that we should have to take care while um, working in the cyber world what exactly we have to do is we have to change our password in after uh, 15 or 20 days because it help us to protect our system our database more secure and we should use the alphanumeric and special character kind of thing so that the password should be more secure and uh, mm, uh, we have to maintain the privacy policies with us this is basically a uh, risk analysis scenario and in this scenario uh, this actually gives you a complete gist of the complete session because who might can attack you the uh, who might can attack only the cyber criminals only the hackers the nation states the insiders the partners or the competitor or the skill individual they are the only reason who can attack you then what are they after what are the key of business which can risk you and to mitigate this so these are some points which can actually gives you the complete analysis because if we are in the cyber world we are at the high risk and because we are at the high risk so there are lot many kind of damages that can be done with the help of the attackers with the help of cyber criminals or with the help of the competitor so what technique should we take while uh, i mean what technique might that use us to uh, to uh, avoid these kind of scenario and these are we have to be updated we have to be uh, use the uh, uh, latest version of the softwares we have to make our credentials and the details to be secured so that no one can easily fetch our data or no one can easily spread our data here and there then we have 
some cyber risk programs and governance see this we can discuss in the next slide because because nowadays government is also spending lot much amount on the cyber security see uh, if we can see these headlines we can easily analyze that uh, if we can look to the national world or the international world that uh, this cyber security is not on the mind of every decision maker in the major organization around us because digital transformation it identify transformation zero trust security and identify and access management and our term you here talked about like uh, it and a level of professional all the time so the recent data breaches like in a uh, just style or in an academy or just pay or or one more uh, company is there that is dr reddy's and big basket they have a data breach and among others they have put a uh, basically a question mark on data security and there have been a call of implementing strict laws on cyber security so it is not just a private sector but that is a concern of cyber about the cyber security the government is also investing a uh, lot funds or they are investing like anything on the cyber security and these cyber security threats are increasing because uh, because at the rate that has never been um, seen before like one reason of these is increasing in the change of work environment due to the covid due to, due to this pandemic more common employees are working from home and they were before like this is basically a bad actors are taking advantage of the fact that people are working from the home to breach their system and they are gaining the access to the government systems so this cyber attack is not being carried out in just a, a random person in the in in their uh, basement like they, uh, like they are this is like a government organization are actually they are uh, they are uh, worried about this uh, security issues they they really want their database their information their uh, credentials and and their details to be saved and preserved so that is why the number of national and international governments are working on it and they are basically providing a uh, funds so that the uh, these these uh, security aspects policies fundamental things should be uh, known by others and we should be take care about these cyber attacks and uh, we we should take care about the cyber issues also but uh, if we can look into uh, uh, into into uh, the real scenarios like the cyber attack is also increasing in the sovereignty and that we all know about like uh, like uh, uh this is there in nowadays in the uh, in in and in our uh, uh, newspapers also so this this cyber security is a major concern for government also this is why it is major concern because nowadays we are all are on web and we all are uh, spreading our information easily on web and that uh, to uh, which we have to be considered and we have to be attentive while using the cyber space by uh, an individual so this is a concluding remark like uh, we should be aware we should uh, encrypt our data we should be aware about the tools and we can use the tools also so this is all about from my side and these are the few references or the uh, newspaper headlines which i captured for for preparing my slides so that's it from, from my side so let us i mean is there any questions and do let me know yeah uh, thank you dr manju for this wonderful session we have in fact some questions so and most of them were in the chat so let me ask you on the behalf of participants the uh, the first one was that what is the current research problem which we need to address i have studied cyber security but mostly of it consists of uh, theory part no no i am not getting the uh, let me let me see the question if the uh, where is the question is actually it is it, it is coming privately yeah. okay let me send you the the uh, questions maybe yeah then. yeah yeah that will be uh, good for me then okay i will do that one by one. all right so i hope you have received the first one no, i'm so sorry i didn't uh, in the chat me. can you see that in the chat let me let me let me check what is the current research problem which we need to address i have studied about the cyber security cyber security mostly consists of theory no actually not cyber security consists of theory as well as the concepts also 
but but uh, uh, the, if you are asking about me the research problem then because because my field is the protocol side i'm working on the protocol side so what i can suggest you is that we have number of protocols are there in the research for 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 authentication for accountability for integrity and for that the i mean cyber security is a big domain you have to identify where you want to work like you want to work on the attack side you want to work on the protocol side you want to uh, work on the defending side or the prevention preventing side like if i can take an example of a virus antivirus then antivirus is working in different domain they are just identifying the signatures they are creating the protocols they are creating the set of rules so this is a big domain you have to identify you have to work on which uh, zone like on attacks on protocols on uh, on on algorithms yeah i'm sending the next question okay Uh, I receive one more question. That is, how can how can an individual safeguard a system from a ransomware? Uh, yes, we can safeguard our system from the ransomware with the help of the updated version of the software. If you have an updated version of the software, you can easily uh, prevent your uh, system from the ransomware attack. And you also have to use like uh, I mean, uh, ransomware is basically. applied when uh, when our system is compromised or or we can say our operating system is compromised compromised so what you have to do is you have to make a backup of your data that cannot be easily compromised you have to secure your backup you have to use the security softwares and that software should be updated and uh, or or what else you can you have to be like uh, aware about the programs which are actually running at the background stage of your system that you should have to take care yeah uh, there is one more question i have sent you in the chat uh, that how can, how we can protect a zero day attack what is the question um okay let me send this one second the question goes like this what are the challenges in digital forensics we need to cope with nowadays Oh, there are lot many challenges actually. In 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 each and every domain, we have various challenges. Like if if I go I, uh, look towards IoT uh, devices, then we have challenges. We have to secure all the devices. You need, uh, um, I mean, uh, securely. We have single device. We have to secure it. Nowadays, what we follow, if we identify a device, we just check it. Uh, we just link it uh, with our mobile system, and we click on the default password. We should avoid that kind of situation. so that is specifically for iot devices and if we if i look towards the database management system then that particular system should be uh, protected from sql injections from s uh, from xss so each and every domain have their own uh, kind of scenarios so uh, that cannot be easily uh, answered because because uh, each and every domain have their own security aspect so that we because security is basically a non functional criteria so, and that that is to be followed in all the domain uh next question is does all the attacks uh, that compromise with the cia rule that is confidentiality integrity and availability all of them affect privacy or only some of them no some of them affect privacy in fact the privacy means your own data if your own data is revealed it means the, the complete thing confidentiality integrity and accountability is also one of thing like if i am sending something and i'm not expecting that i'm sending something that is also revealing the information so private information is your own information if that day if that data is compromised it means uh, you are compromised with the with confidentiality integrity and few more things like non reputation is may you this, this kind of issues may happen by transmitting the data while while on the network uh, we are sending the data next question is that uh, ma'am can you suggest some research areas where ai can be applied for improve network security yeah 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 because uh, see ai is nowadays in in a uh, in a market and uh, while using the protocols while using the algorithms we, like uh, if i want to improve the authenticity process we i can add in the ai concept into it i can add nature inspired algorithm into it so that we can give a better solution to that particular approach what authenticity process is applied for a particular organization so we can use ai ai is nowadays in the because ai is a kind of thing which we can add in in the security aspects to improve the algorithm performances so uh, i think algorithm is the one 
where we can use ai for 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 even detecting for an attack also we can use ai for for creating a signature of an attack we can also use ai uh another question is uh, there are so many facts which claim that antivirus they slow down and worsen the computer performance so is it good to use antivirus or do we have any other substitute for the same so for this for this particular question we should use antiviruses because it it doesn't mean that it can slow down your uh, system because antivirus is there to protect you not to harm you they are just slow downing slow downing your system process only because they are running something at the background level they are protecting your system itself so it you see i am using antivirus in my mobile phone but it doesn't affect my system because if you are going for the licensed version of antivirus then it will be good if you are using the pirated one then you should avoid that kind of virus antiviruses because pirated means they don't have the advanced version of uh, uh, virus features because uh, licensed one having the updates uh, so they they are performing better nowadays uh, next question is as a user what steps can we take to safeguard ourselves from attacks on our phone and our computer see uh, 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 to being um, to uh, if if i can look to the real scenario we cannot save ourselves to be very honest just what we can do is we can prevent ourselves from attacks so what we can do is we cannot easily share our uh, passwords we cannot sh easily share our details we cannot use the uh, like uh, we in, uh, in our system we usually go for uh, uh, like remember password we we should not go for that kind of scenarios because anyone else can come and access your system and they can access all the password so you should be aware uh, is the major important thing you should prevent yourself you cannot uh, i mean uh, in the real scenario the only thing you can do is you can prevent yourself Uh, another question is that we take all the precautions and keep our systems updated and softwares and we do all these necessary things but still we see that systems are compromised so how, how is it this this may be possible because of the older versions it may be possible because if if you are accessing the uh, unsafe network because if you are going some like you are you are going at the airport and you are using the unsafe network then also your system will be compromised so you have to aware that you first of all you have to uh, don't go for the open port kind of scenarios you just open it only on those ports which are required to be open but uh, but uh, because this is a network this is the cyber space the only thing uh, like, uh, see i didn't face this kind of issues i don't know uh, how you are facing the issues if you are using the antivirus if you are using the protocols the things and how how your system is get compromised that is a major issue i think maybe you are using the pirated something into your system maybe yeah, that may be the reason uh, next question is what is the status of cyber security in our country i think the question is related to what is happening so uh, 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 yeah i cannot answer uh, on the on the majorly side but as far as a good researcher i just only know that yeah various researchers are working for the cyber security they are providing major preventions nowadays our system is also secure like uh, if uh, if i look to the past 5 years before uh, jnu library was hacked but now my library is pretty secured it cannot be hacked by any other one so if we have hackers so we have preventers also so i i i think uh, i mean uh, researchers are working on it so it is a slowly gradual process if we have uh, uh, techniques then we have a uh, prevention issues also i mean we have prevention techniques also uh next is ma'am can you please rephrase cross site scripting and are there any apps available to prevent it see uh, the better option is you just explore the web and you can get a lot many uh, things on for the cross site scripting attack nowadays cross site scripting attack is not exactly in the market but yeah it is for 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 capturing the database we are using cross site scripting attack and and uh, for that you have to be grilled out for the scripting knowledge and kind of thing then only you can protect your system with the cross site scripting attack uh next question is what is the basic purpose behind end to end encryption in social media and why do we need it see end to end encryption as as far as my knowledge is concerned end to end means you are you are just connecting with the point to point communication and uh, 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 can you can you repeat the question so please i will just focus what is the basic purpose behind end to end encryption in social media 
end to end encryption means uh, we are just uh, uh, i mean whatever plain text we have we are just converting that plain text into the uh, into the cipher text with a, a knowledge of only the source and the destination part that is end to end end to end means many to many also not one to one so uh, that i think that is applicable with the help of blockchain technology uh, i think Uh, next is if i use a pen drive with virus in my computer which type of attack it is considered see it it may be a spyware it may be a, a virus it may be a worm because whatever virus is injected by the attacker that you may not know so uh, it it may be anything so it's better to uh, run that pen drive into the antivirus system it can easily detect and uh, you can get the answer It actually it cannot allow you to run that virus on your system if that virus is is already signatured then you, uh, the, that pen drive cannot be accessible by your system uh, some mem some graduate students are asking about some useful resources and links from where they can study more about the cyber security and related stuff see uh, the mo the major uh, resources are research so uh, you just explore the uh, i mean good published Uh, articles and through which you can at least know about the latest updates which are going on, and uh, because because as far as, because I am in the research field, so I explore a lot many things. So not exactly I don't have a single source. Like you go for IEEE, you go for Springer, and there are a lot many good research papers which are actually giving the uh, fruitful information uh, related to the cyber security. So for for the future upcoming researchers, I better suggest to explore Google Scholar and the good publishers. Uh, next question is that big corporations have uh, all the resources all the money they have genuine os and software but is still their systems are hacked so how how it is possible see uh, this is possible because of the policies and the scenario of an organization see one system have money but they don't want to spend more one system have they don't have money but they want to uh, secure their system more so it depends on the rules and regulation of the organization see the, the cisco is is not hacked yet i don't know why because 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 they are providing the products they are, they have their own system or uh, every each and every system is organized only if there is any gain to the attacker so that can be compromised because bank financial thing i have shared some uh, issues they are completely depend on the financial if the monetary gain is there then they may be hacked they may be fished the uh, if there is no reason of uh, 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 attacking to a particular in individual then it they are uh, almost safe but uh, because it depends on the organization's rules and policy completely right uh, next question is that how how by which method hackers flood the server there are lot many methods we have tool also for flooding the server we have botnet issues so that we can flood the server even nowadays if you are flooding a server you are planning to flooding a server but the, the servers and the organizations are pretty uh, intelligent they are creating a bot for 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 avoiding the flooding kind of issues so flooding is a outdated issue so we can uh, switch to the other issues because flooding they have we have already a solution of that we create a bot so maximum flood go to the bot and our servers are safe um next is uh, can we check the authenticity of a link without clicking it no no we cannot check we cannot check in fact it's better not to click on the unknown link and uh, next question is how oh, can no, we no 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 I'm, i'm sorry we can check if you can read out that complete url i'm so sorry if you can read out that complete url that particular if you have a knowledge of url of splitting each and every uh, i mean each and every character in uh, in a different scenario then you can check i mean you have to be expertized while checking the particular url and uh, what are the latest research areas in cyber security in which i can make a career See what what I can suggest you is just go to my Google Scholar profile. If you can find it something interesting, you can ask me on my email. That will be the better one. Okay, so yeah, I think some more questions are coming, but they are kind so, of repetition. No, I I just share my email ID. My email ID is manjukari at jnu dot ac dot in. If you have any queries, uh, participants, you can email me. I I will respond for sure. and uh, some uh, it is not question but kind of request that uh, many people are asking for the slides oh all right, uh, right. Okay. Uh, so uh, with that uh, i will stop taking more questions thank uh, you so much. thank you uh, ma'am
for your time and uh, you took some time out for this very informative session. Uh, you must be busy, you must be having a busy schedule, but delivered very useful and crucial information on various aspects of cybersecurity. So thanks for explaining the key concepts and primary challenges and the possible solutions very clearly, especially the elements and levels of security, the types of attacks and threats, privacy issues like profile cloning and real life uh, examples you all, all, all also gave, including banks and others. So I thank you once again on the behalf of Department of Computer Science in your leader. Uh, now I would like to invite Professor Tamanna Siddiqui, ma'am, coordinator of this workshop, to uh, present the certificate of uh, appreciation to Dr. Manju Khari and express her views on today's session. I am very thankful to Tamanna ma'am uh, for giving her 100% despite being ill. So, uh, ma'am, can you hear us? Uh, yes, uh, Nadim, can you hear me? Ah, yes, so I will ask uh, Zishan to give me the permission to share my screen, please. Uh, hello. Yes. Am I uh, audible? Yes, yes. Oh. yes uh, a, big, a big thanks to Dr. Manju Khari, Associate Professor Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi, uh, for her valuable lecture on the topic challenges and issues in cybersecurity. You explained all technical concepts in a very simple way. That was the beauty of your lecture. It's an honor, honor for me to present a certificate of appreciation to you, Dr. Manju. This certificate is token of respect from entire family of Department of Computer Science, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh. Thank you very much, Dr. Manju. Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, I can view the certificate. Thank you. Uh, please, please accept it for the, from entire family of Department of Computer Science. Uh, this is our honor for you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks a lot. You are always welcome. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Dr. Manju. Uh, ma'am, should I? Uh, yes, ma'am, ma please continue. Manju, ma'am, please continue. You want to say something? Okay, so for all the participants, tomorrow please join us at 4 p.m. for the technical session of day two. And tomorrow the resource person would be Mr. S.H. Abbas Mehdi. Joint Director, SDPI, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Bhopal. He will be delivering a lecture on the topic Current Trends of Cybersecurity and Preventive Techniques. The link of the online meeting will remain same for the whole five day workshop, and you may receive the email again, but the link will remain same. So, thank you everyone uh, for joining. Let's meet again tomorrow at 4 pm, and today's session is finally over.